coronavirus shutdown has hurt businesses around the world, and they could be looking to China for investment. This would not be good. Welcome back to China Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. The CCP virus has spread across the globe, infecting millions of people. And in response, a lot of governments have shut down non-essential businesses. This has put a huge number of Western companies in or close to bankruptcy. But don't worry, there could be an easy solution to this crisis that started in China. Money from China. The Chinese Communist Party may try to use this economic downturn to buy up American and European companies at bargain basement prices. Because when you're drowning, you'll let anyone help you, including the guy who threw you in the water in the first place. A few weeks ago, a Chinese state-backed investment firm called China Reform Holdings tried to take control of a British graphics chip maker called Imagination Technologies. The deal would have gone through, except the UK government stepped in at the last minute to block it on national security concerns. Of course, China Reform Holdings still provides a third of the funding to Canyon Bridge, the private equity firm that owns Imagination Technologies. So it's not over. But it highlights a larger problem. Companies in the West are vulnerable to hostile Chinese investment now more than ever. In 2019, Chinese entities invested nearly $13 billion in European Union countries. In 2018, Chinese entities invested about $25 billion in the United States. A lot of it was in the tech industry. And this is not just random Chinese companies investing in whatever they think will be profitable. It's part of the Chinese Communist Party's unified plan to acquire foreign technology. Back in 2015, the Chinese government announced a plan called Made in China 2025. The goal was to become the world's leading manufacturer in 10 high-tech sectors. Those include things like information technology, like what the UK's Imagination Technologies does, as well as biopharmaceuticals, like making drugs and medical devices. Now at first, Chinese state-run media heavily promoted Made in China 2025, with tons of articles and creepy cartoons. What is happening there? Is the world trying to run away? Where is it going? It's very unclear. Anyway, some people in the West saw Made in China 2025 as a security threat. This report says it aims to systematically acquire cutting-edge technology and generate large-scale technology transfer. In the long term, China wants to obtain control over the most profitable segments of global supply chains and production networks. Some Western governments, especially the Trump administration, started to publicly express concern about it. So the Chinese government dropped it. But they didn't actually drop their plan, they just dropped the name, Made in China 2025. The policy remains. And now we're halfway to 2025. And we've seen the impact of this plan that shall no longer be named. We've especially noticed it recently with China now being the world's major producer of ventilators and respirators that have been in such short supply. The key danger now is that with U.S. companies feeling the crunch, they're more likely to turn to any investor for money, even investors with ties to the Chinese Communist Party. This report from the Rhodium Group on March 30th says that some Chinese firms are positioned to take advantage of the sharp drop in global company valuations. It makes sense, because after the 2008-09 crisis, Chinese firms ventured out to acquire discounted assets around the globe, especially those with strategic utility. The good news is some governments are more aware this time. Fool me once, shame on Shame on you. 
It fooled me. We can't get fooled again. It seems the Trump administration has adhered to those words of wisdom. In the United States, the government has woken up to the national security implications of losing sensitive capabilities to China. The Committee on Foreign Investment in the United States, CFIUS, now plays a very active role in screening potential takeovers on national security grounds. But despite that, a lot of Chinese investment in the U.S. has continued as Chinese investors shifted some of their venture investments to industries and technologies that aren't drawing as much scrutiny. And the European Union doesn't even have an equivalent of CFIUS. Each country is left to fend for itself, and many of those countries have been stupid. Italy, Greece, Portugal. I'm going to stop there or else this episode will get too long. But I do also have to mention how many European countries are still willing to have Chinese state-connected company Huawei run their 5G networks, despite U.S. warnings over security concerns. But more investment from Chinese companies means more control by the Chinese state. Remember, every major Chinese firm has a Chinese Communist Party secretary. And if a Chinese company has made it really big, that's because it had lots of connections with the party along the way. There's no such thing as a completely private Chinese company. And that's why Western governments would be smart to keep a closer eye on Chinese investment during this crisis, and figure out a way to help their own domestic companies without relying on China. And now, I'll answer a question from a fan who supports China Uncensored on Patreon. Charlie Matsubara asks, What do you think about the proposed Chinese digital currency? Will it really pose a threat to dollar supremacy? Wow, that's a good question, Charlie. Probably merits its own episode. But the short answer is, China's digital currency would allow the Communist Party to have total control over the money. They already have a lot of control now, since most transactions are being done through Alipay and WeChat Pay. But a true digital currency would make it absolute. The CCP could easily monitor all transactions and credit or remove money from anyone's account at any time. Speak out against the CCP's coronavirus cover-up? Now all your money's gone. But precisely for that reason, a digital Chinese currency may pose less of a threat to the U.S. dollar. If foreign companies are concerned about security, they'd better not use digital Chinese yuan. Then again, European countries still want to use Huawei despite the security concerns, so who knows? Thanks for your question, Charlie. And thank you for watching. Over the past two months, a lot of you have stepped up and joined our China Uncensored 50 Cent Army by contributing a dollar or more per episode through the crowdfunding website Patreon. This is making a huge difference for us, as we get through this difficult time with YouTube demonetizing a lot of our content about controversial topics like the coronavirus, which is pretty much all we've been covering for the past couple of months. So thank you for your support. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.